Welcome to Take Two, the talk show where we take two actors and get two takes on the real lives of working performers. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. It was William Shakespeare who wrote, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. This famous line introduces the idea that life is like a theatrical play where everyone has a role to perform and that our lives are structured in a series of roles that we are destined to play out. In the grand adventure of life, we will play many roles. Life is not a dress rehearsal. We get one shot at this experience. And as such, in the adventures in acting, the world of theater operates in the same way. What better way to breathe life into this concept than to learn from two gifted and highly experienced theater actors? Paige Brantley and Brian Hoffman are absolutely amazing performers, and it is my pleasure to have them both with us here today. Man, I'm really looking forward to this one. Paige, Brian, welcome to Take Two. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm really, really excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you here. In fact, uh, this is my first conversation on the show with theater actors, which is a unique element uh, that uh, we really look forward to having this conversation today. Um, but in the adventures in acting, there is always a beginning. There's always a starting point, and there's always inspiration for wanting to pursue the craft of acting. I'm going to ask you both, where did your passion for theater come from specifically? Um, and do you recall the first role that you ever had as a stage actor? Paige, I want to start with you. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about you and, uh, you know, where your passion for theater came from. Sure. Um, so I grew up in Fort Worth and I was doing a company called Kids Who Care, which pretty much uh, cultivated this passion that I have for theater. Uh, I was trying soccer, tap, whatnot, and I, nothing was really sticking besides doing theater. I was a little bit of a ham growing up. Gotcha. Um, and it wasn't until I was in seventh grade um, doing Guys and Dolls that I got the role of Sarah Brown. And I was like, oh, man, I'm out of the chorus. And then it, <laughs> that so, great, great. it, it pretty much stuck after that, for sure. Well, fantastic. Um, Brian, uh, where did your passion for theater come from? Well, similar to Paige, um, I started in seventh grade. My sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Sullivan, suggested to me that... Uh, that I take a speech class when I get to middle school. And I had no idea what speech was. Like, do you give speeches? Uh, but I needed a fine arts credit and I didn't sing and I didn't play a musical instrument. So I signed up for speech and little did I know it was a theater class. And uh, while I don't remember the, any of the roles that I had in middle school, uh, when I got to high school, my first role was Theo in the musical Pippin. And that was a great experience. And my high school theater teacher, Miss Pivito, is the one I would say is primarily most responsible for develop, make, developing my uh, my passion for theater. Well, that's fantastic, fantastic. Um, so you you sing and act as well. So and you both do, yes, yeah. So so theater, musical theater, it's a it's a relative term here. So it's for sure. I would say I'm I'm a double threat. Triple is a little bit iffy when it comes to just try to. Do my best, keep up with it, you know. <laughs> well, fantastic, fantastic. We'll uh, get into that a little bit more uh, as the show goes on here today. But since the show is all about uh, the adventures in acting, uh, could you go share an adventure that significantly changed your approach to acting? Yeah, Brian, why don't we start with you? Is there something that happened in your acting journey that uh, you know kind of made things click for you? Well, I would say from for me, it's not so much of a, a single event as it is more of a, a, a personal growth throughout the years. Um, when, when I was younger and in my twenties and trying to, to get parts in uh, Dallas theater, I was a dime a dozen. There were, were so many people in my same, uh, age group that were all fighting for the same roles. Um, I ended up taking a, about a 20 year break from theater when I got married and had kids and was doing the family thing and establishing a career in the real world. And when I came back in 2016, um, I found that I was I was much more unique. I was a, a 40, 50 something uh, that had a lot of experience, a lot of training, and I tended to get cast quite a bit. So it was really, uh, I think, coming back at a later stage in life when I have more experience, uh, more more life to draw from to bring to the roles, um, because ultimately that's uh, you know you can really only kind of guess what a character is going through when you're when you're young but once you get to my age 
you actually know what it's like to lose a parent, to get a divorce, mm. um, some of these really important life experiences that can really inform your acting and, and bring something more to the role. Um, so that's really, I think, what changed for me is I got older. Gotcha. And life experiences uh, just kind of filling in those, uh, those, that education for you. Right. Uh, you know, Paige, no two acting journeys are the same. You know, uh, could you share an adventure that significantly changed your approach to acting? Sure. Um, it wasn't until I graduated college and I was living in Chicago mm -hmm. um, shortly after that. I was auditioning, doing the EPAs, the equity auditions, waiting all day, mm -hmm. not getting seen, just kind of, you know, really, really going through it a little bit. And I had um, a director from college reach out and say, hey, do you want to audition for this production that I'm doing in Colorado? And it really just um, opened my eyes to regional theater. Okay. And so I ended up getting that role um, mm -hmm. as Cat in Taming of the Shrew. And we did the whole production in Breckenridge, Colorado. And it was just... I, we got to we were housed we got to stay there for three months and just experience life in Breckenridge in the summer which is it's phenomenally the, beautiful oh and uh, yeah. it was it so that was the beginning of the adventure for me and I sought out regional roles exclusively exclusively after that gotcha well that's that's fascinating absolutely um, you know, theater is a, is a unique de acting discipline, whether it's musical theater or, or what have you. Um, what makes being a theater actor more challenging than, uh, say, you know, an on-camera actor? Uh, Brian, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think the thing for me that is the most challenging is there are no retakes uh, in live theater. Whatever happens on stage happens, and you have to deal with it, whether there's, you know, someone drops a line, uh, there's a, a, a technical snafu. Mm. Um, something happens that you didn't rehearse that you're not expecting. You have to be in the scene. You have to be listening. Uh, you have to know the story, most importantly, because that will always help you to get back on track. Um, I am not very good at improv, um, <laughs> but I have had to uh, improve my improv uh, to be a, a good stage actor because things happen that, that you don't expect. Uh, you might have a phone go off in the in the audience or uh, someone on the front row talking uh, to their neighbor. Um, you, you really have to stay 100% focused. There are no breaks. Um, and, and that's, uh, I think, a, a huge challenge that's different from any other medium. Gotcha. I mean, just it's it's live. It's 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 one take. It's it's let's go. So, <laughs> wow, that is that's that's a unique uh, approach to. What makes theater different uh, from, you know, on camera and voiceover and things like that? Paige, what's your take on that? You know, I can't, I don't know if I can agree with it being more challenging, honestly. And that's just a personal thing for me. I really struggle with uh, film and on camera. And it's something that I'm working on getting much better at. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I feel film and on camera is really one take, if you will. But for theater, you have a little bit more leeway. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of Meisner, so I, I really enjoy repetition sometimes. And sometimes I'll kind of cheat during scenes and, you know, repeat like maybe two or three times until I can find it. And I'm like, that's it. Um, but I, I think what's difficult about theater is um, keeping things fresh, mm. right? And so you have to really train your your muscle memory and um, be consistent with your blocking and the things that you've already rehearsed with the directors and with the other actors so that you're not just like throwing people for a loop mm. during the scene, right? That's where things start to go awry, but you have to trust yourself enough and know the trajectory of your character in the story and live moment to moment. Right. Not end gaining is huge. Me, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> can't play the end of it. You got to just live in the moment. Yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. well, you know, Brian mentioned, uh, you know, phones going off in the in the in the crowd. You know, someone missing their line and things like that. But uh, Paige, I want to ask you, like, have there been any wild or unexpected moments during live performances that mm -hmm. you've had to navigate personally? Uh personally, 
I've been I've been pretty fortunate. I've had a couple of wardrobe malfunctions. You know, something busts loose and on a costume piece. You got to hold it up the whole scene. I've definitely had that, but I think the most shocking, most abrupt thing that's happened was we were doing Romeo and Juliet in college and the person that was playing Lord Capulet and if you're watching this I apologize I'm not naming her directly <laughs> but oh bless her heart she was feeling sick and it was I think it was like the first or second scene of the show and she just barfed oh no <laughs> so much in her hand oh my goodness and you know I I was playing Tibble so I'm waiting to like run on you know um, like a couple lines later and there's just nothing there's nothing happening you know and you can't like peer out of the curtain because you know if you can see the audience we can see you right and so we're all just backstage like what's going on and you hear some people in the audience go oh no. <laughs> you just hear oh my goodness he had thrown the vomit onto the ground oh it was, it was very strong choice. Yeah. But they ended up canceling the show. Wow. After that. And I've never been a part of a production that's full on just canceled. Oh, they just straight up that the end of the show. Thank you folks for coming out. Uh and yeah. come see us again soon. Usually it'd yeah. be like a stage manager would go on with a script or something mm -hmm. like that. But right. they just they canceled it. So that was that was Wow. Wow. That's uh that's an amazing story. My goodness. Uh Brian, yeah, you know, have you had any wild or unexpected moments you've had it down in that? <laughs> I can cry. Um, so I was in a production of Rumors at uh, Allen Contemporary Theater a couple of years ago. And uh, me and my stage wife come on stage, uh, supposed to be there for a party. So we're dressed in tuxedos and, and very fancy dress. And the host of the party walks on stage and brings a bag of pretzels, an unopened bag of pretzels. Uh, the gag is... I try to open the pretzel and I can't and I'm trying and I'm trying and I put the, the bag down and my stage wife is supposed to come over and she very easily opens the bag. <laughs> so I do my gear, I, I, I can't, I can't open, I can't open and I put the pretzels down and the bag literally explodes. <laughs> pretzels <laughs> oh, everywhere, <laughs> under furniture, <laughs> all across the stage. I turned and I looked at my stage wife and she was like, <laughs> Which was perfect because her character is very sarcastic. Yeah. And like, she's like, that's not, not my problem. That's your problem. So for the rest of the scene, yeah. I was on my hands and knees in a tuxedo, picking up pretzels on the stage, <laughs> delivering my line still. Not, of course, doing the blocking that I was originally planned to do, but you, you just you deal with whatever happens wow. on stage. And you say you're not good at improv. <laughs> that, is, uh, <laughs> that is that's uh, contrary to the fact there. Well, you know, on take two, uh, we like to take creative risks, and uh, I like to put my actors in the hot seat. After this break, uh, Paige and Brian are going to play a little game with me called Have You Ever Theater Edition. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is Larry. And this is Mark. Larry is Mr. Podcast. He's launched dozens of successful podcasts, and he's the editor-in-chief of Podfest Messenger and co-promoter of Podfest. Mark is Mr. Video Marketing. He's produced thousands of hours of broadcast and commercial media over 30 years, and he combines that with expertise in marketing strategy. We're excited to join forces to offer custom multimedia branding so that businesses can reach and grow their audience. Through polished broadcast quality content, you can position your brand in a creative and engaging way, amplifying your impact. So we've designed a 16-week process a completely done-for-you solution. Strategy, development, production, launch, distribution, support, and monetization. Over six hours each of broadcast quality video and audio content in multi-channel formats. So check out all of the details at multimediabranding.now.site and fill out the contact form. You can also follow the links in the comments or reach out to us directly. Amplify your impact with custom multimedia branding. Hi, I'm Jeff Savage, marathon runner and author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Savage Resilience, Conquer Adversity and Be Your Own Hero. In this powerful book, you'll discover correlations between what it takes to finish a marathon and what it takes to be successful in any long-range goal you may have. 
Order your copy of Savage Resilience today on Amazon or by visiting jeffsavageonline.com. The audiobook is also available on Audible and the iTunes Store on Apple devices. I'm Jeff Savage, and I encourage you to conquer adversity and be your own hero. Welcome back to Take Two. I'm your host, Jeff Savage. Uh, I'm here with theater actors Paige Brantley and Brian Hoffman. I'm putting them in the hot seat for a fun segment called Have You Ever Theater Edition. I'm going to ask them both 10 rapid fire questions and if these things ever happen to them in the world of theater uh, and their, uh, their lively uh, answers. So, Paige, I'm going to start with you. All right. Have you ever played a child? Yes. Okay. Have you ever played a supernatural being? Ooh, uh, an animal. Oh, okay. Have you, have you ever forgotten a line on stage? 100%. Okay. <laughs> have you ever been injured during a show? Yeah. What happened there? Oh, it was during that run of Romeo and Juliet. I was, I had a, a small sword in one hand and a dagger in the other. And I was really feeling myself during that first battle. Um, and I was playing Tibble, so, you know, hot, fiery. And we messed up the blocking just a little bit. And I just stabbed myself right in the leg. And I still have <laughs> some battle wound to show. Wow. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, wow. Have you ever operated a spotlight for a show? Negative. Okay. Have you ever. Pull up the set by accident. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever sang a solo in a show? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever played as a male character? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a stage kiss? Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, have you ever made, have you ever made noise backstage during a show? Unfortunately, I'm sure. Okay. I'm Got sure it. I was like laughing or something. <laughs> Got it. Very good. Brian, uh, the real life uh, the trials and tribulations of the uh, of the stage actor. Have you ever played a murderer? Yes. Okay. Have you ever played an animal? Not that I can remember. Okay. Have you ever missed a cue? No. Woo. Okay. No, I have gotcha. never missed a cue. I've always I've forgotten line. Okay. I've never missed a cue. Okay. Good. Good. Hopefully, it won't happen now that we get <laughs> yeah. energy out in the universe. There. You guys are amazing. Have you ever played a musical instrument for a show? No. Okay. Do you play a musical instrument? I do not. Okay. Gotcha. Have you ever helped build a set? Lots of them. Great, great, great. Have you ever died on stage? Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite way to die? Oh, probably when I did a production of Death Trap. Um, we ended up killing each other. Um, I got shot with an arrow to the chest. Oh. Um, and Oh, wait, no. No, I shot the other guy with the arrow. I ended up getting shot with a gun. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. A little bit more, uh, <laughs> a little bit more severe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you ever forgotten a prop on stage? Hmm. I can't think of a time when okay. I did. Have you ever been in a stage fight? Oh yes. Okay. Lots of stage fight. Love, oh. love stage combat. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Have you ever played a ghost? Yes, I have. Okay. And conversely, as I asked Paige, have you ever played as a female character? Yes. I absolutely have. What was the um, It was a show called Nobody's Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, it was at Theater Britain, who is no longer around, unfortunately. But uh, it's a show where I played an accountant, and uh, I've always dreamed of being an author, and I keep sending these short stories in. But the publishing house is a feminist publishing house, and they only yeah. accept stories by women. So I send it in under a, a female pseudonym, and they accept my story, and they have to meet me, and I have to prove that I'm actually a woman. <laughs> oh my god! The whole second act, I'm in drag, oh and I had about a sixty-second period at the end of Act Two, where I had to completely change out of my dress and my makeup and my my bra and tangerine, <laughs> yeah. and uh, get back into my regular character. And it was choreographed to the T with between me and the stage manager. We had we had the the wipes and I was wiping my face and she was taking off my dress and oh my it was it was it was crazy but yes love play in that role wow 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 mm -hmm. very much so the 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 tidbits you learn while you play uh, have you ever that was fascinating thank you so much both of you I'm gonna jump right back into the interview portion of this program um, you know plays and productions normally aren't just one time endeavors they they're runs of shows they. They go several nights uh, or even longer. Uh, some shows run for years. Mm. Uh, but, you know, how do you keep the adventure of acting alive during long runs of a single play? Mm. Uh, Paige, uh, what, what, what do you do to keep, uh, keep up the, the intensity? I think it's about um, 
you know, working those those muscles, right? So definitely starting out in college, I was like, oh, you know, uh, the rehearsal process, there's nothing like it, blah, blah, blah. And then you, you kind of do the repetition and you get more comfortable with it. And uh, for me, it's really advocating for your character, knowing exactly what the motivations and the intentions are and the trajectory of everything. And then remaining consistent and um, moment to moment. Um, and for me, once I read this book called Actor in the Target by Declan Donlan, it was like, I, I believe that's his name. It was so like transformative because basically the whole concept of this book is everything around you is a moving target. Mm. So you are constantly having to adjust how you're trying to hit that target, right? Mm. And it takes a lot of the pressure off of you. It's all about them. And that's what helps me at least stay really fresh. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to kind of expand on that, do you find that the energy you bring to like a Friday night uh, performance versus like a Sunday matinee, is there a, is, is there, is, is there a difference or is it always the same Paige Brantley that steps oh, out on stage? Uh, I would like to say that it's always consistent, but no, like, come on, like <laughs> opening night, you feel like the, it's so palpable. Like it's, it's like napalm sometimes. And then, and then you have the Sunday matinee and it's like, here we go. You know, we're going to wrap it up. But, um, I, you know, that that's also the beauty of it is that it's never going to be the same. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, Brian, I'm going to actually uh, send that question right back to you. And, you know, during a long run of a play, like how do you how do you uh, keep the uh, adventure of acting alive during a long stretch? Well, I guess the fortunate part of what I have done primarily in the last eight years, uh, my runs have been three or four weeks long. So it's that in and of itself is not a challenge. What is really the challenge is once you finally get to that opening night and you have the audience and you're you're feeling that that energy back, um, it's all about continuing to grow uh, throughout the run um, because we, we don't do it long enough for it to really get stale. But but you you don't ever want to like hit a plateau. Uh, you want to continue to improve, whether that's, you know, shaving time off and, and taking the air out in between the lines. So you're, you're making everything tighter and. And, and shorter and uh, but but really the goal is to continue to get better, never stagnate, and to just continue to have fun. Because like, why do we do this if not to enjoy ourselves and and feed some sort of a a, a need for that fulfillment of of what acting brings? Um, so I always just try and and have fun. And and again, the most important thing is to always be listening on stage always be engaged uh, with the other actors on the stage uh, because that's where the real growth happens. When, you, when you're in the moment and you're listening, uh, that, that's when the real magic happens. That's fantastic advice in that regards too. Um, um, you know, the, the acting journey, the adventure of acting, you know, you think about it, a quest and the adventure always has some sort of a, a treasure or a goal at the end. Uh, in the acting journey, you know, what treasures have you discovered about yourself uh, throughout your acting career? And Paige, I want to ask you, you know, as a as an actress, you know, what are some of the things that you've uh, you've you've learned about yourself? That's a very good question. Um, so, as I was mentioning before, I I got into acting because I was kind of a ham, and I like to be the center of attention. And then um, the older I became, the more I started reading about acting, um, like Uta Haga's first book, uh, Stanislavski, and I started really understanding why I loved it, and it's because um, it brings people together. Um, it has the power to uplift community and positively change community. Good. And so that's why I like it. In addition to still being a ham, of course, you know, and, and finding the joy of performing and, you know, the ritual of putting on your makeup and and becoming the character, right? And then walking away from that. There's something so magical about theater and um, having that mindset for me of, you know, 
this can be good uh, for the ultimate good of society is what keeps me going with it. It it helps me fall and it helps me go away from, you know, being jaded, especially there's months or years at a time where you're not acting, mm. you know, or sometimes you go away from it and you can come back to it because, you know, if you come back to it, usually theater is always going to have its arms open for you, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's you that has to change. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, wow. That's, uh, that's very insightful. Thanks for sharing that, Paige. Um, Brian, what treasures has the uh, adventures in acting, uh, you know, made you discover about yourself? Well, I remember as a, a young child, I was very shy. Mm. Um, and, and thinking back to when my sixth grade teacher told me to sign up for a speech class, uh, maybe that's what she saw, uh, that this would be a way to get me out of my shell. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really surprised me how, how easily I took to it because I was, I, I just was very shy and being on stage and, and, and having lots of people watching me, um, that was a very unusual experience for me, but it, it fit, uh, something about it just fit with, with me, um, and, and one of the other things that I've really learned, you talk about becoming someone else and having, you have life experiences on stage, things that you as, 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 as Brian, I would never get a chance to do. Great example of that. Uh, I have two boys mm -hmm. and the first show that I did after I came back from my 20 year break, uh, was a show where I played a father whose daughter was getting married. Mm -hmm. And there was a point at the end of the play where I walk out on stage and I see my daughter in her wedding dress. And every night, it just, it got me. Like, uh -huh. it hit me right in the feels because I don't have a daughter. Yeah. I'm never going to have that moment. But I got that moment because I was in that play. That's and I think that's just a beautiful thing about theater. Mm. Yeah. I, I, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Both of you, just uh, incredible insights there. And, and isn't that what, you know, just being an actor is, is all about is just ex experiencing emotions and being able to, uh, you know, play characters and bring those to life. And, uh, wow. Thank you so much for, for, you know, giving us the, and the audience, those, uh, those great insights. Speaking of the audience, uh, I want you to both, uh, be able to, uh, let our guests know a little bit more about how they can learn more about you. Paige, do you want to let our audience know uh, how they can find more about you? Sure. Yeah. I'm on Instagram. Um, that's the easiest way to find me. It's at P-A-I-G-E, Brantley, B-R-A-N-T-L-E-Y, underscore, underscore. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Brian, where can uh, our audience find out more about you? So I am not on the, most of the, the social media sites. I am on Facebook, so you can certainly find me there. Now, uh, somewhere out there, uh, somebody's watching this show who is just beginning their acting journey. Uh, Brian? Take a look at that uh, camera and talk to that person right now who needs to hear a great piece of advice about, uh, about the acting journey. Well, what do you want to tell them today? I would say really focus on the craft. Um, take classes. Uh, talk to your peers. Um, uh, take those opportunities to learn because while you know the, the goal of acting is to be natural, there are so many things about the craft that you have to learn uh, that make you better, uh, that need to become second nature. So, so take every opportunity that you can to learn about the craft. Um, and I guess, like I said before, the, the best thing that you can do when you're on stage is to always be listening uh, and know the story, know your character, know what your objectives are, uh, and actively uh, go after those objectives because that's what makes the, the performance so much more interesting uh, when you see someone actively trying to get something uh, from the scene or from another character. Got it. I got it. That's fantastic. Paige, what would you tell somebody who's just starting their acting uh, journey out? To, what's one piece of advice you would give them today? Well, I would say the same as Brian. Get into classes, uh, network, you know, talk to your peers and just really put yourself out there and Honestly, something that I am working on this year is content creation, you know, making your own plays, your own short films, raising the funds to do that, and then producing your own work. If there's not a play that's out there that's auditioning and you you don't really fit in it, make something that's for you. 
I love that. Be creative. Be your own hero. Be your own. Uh, make your own door. Exactly. Let's say when opportunity doesn't knock, build your own door. Right. I like that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I want to thank our guests uh, today, Paige Brantley and Brian Hoffman, for coming on to Take Two and uh, giving us their perspective on the world of theater and the adventures in acting. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Savage. You can find out more about me by visiting my website at jeffsavageonline.com. You can uh, follow Take Two on social media, on LinkedIn and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sync Lab Media Studio. There you can find all episodes streaming and also at the Sync Lab Media Network. Paige, Brian, thank you so much for uh, being a part of the show today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, come back and watch us again soon. Bye-bye.